This right here is the best bang for the buck CPU right now. You can currently find a Ryzen 5 3600 used for about $75 on eBay and even lower on AliExpress. By the way, thanks to Marcos for reminding me about AliExpress on Discord because I tend to forget that it exists. Even brand new, the R5 3600 tends to frequently drop below $100 on Amazon, so keep an eye there as well. There are literally no better options at this price. For a little less, there is the i3-10100, but it is a much worse CPU, and for a little more, there is the i5-10400. However, it doesn't make sense buying that either, since performance-wise it is not better. It requires a more expensive board to overclock the memory to only match the performance of our Ryzen 5, and the upgrade path is basically non-existent with the Intel chip. We're pairing our Ryzen CPU with a B450 Tomahawk motherboard, 32GB of 3200 mega transfer memory, an RX 6800 graphics card, and a 700 watt power supply. As always, latest drivers were used at the time of testing, and the power plant's been set to ultimate performance. The only area where I screwed up is not enabling SAM, which is something I realized after testing, so keep in mind that by enabling it, you'll see a boost in performance in some titles. Oh, and by the way, settings in certain GPU-intensive titles were slightly lowered to avoid GPU bottlenecks. Protecting your online activity and keeping your data safe is extremely important, and if you value your privacy and want to stay protected, you can do so with Private Internet Access VPN, who I'd also like to thank for sponsoring this video. A VPN allows you to hide your IP address through an encrypted tunnel, shielding you from those who are trying to exploit your private information, which is especially important if you tend to connect to public Wi-Fi's. And one of my personal favorite benefits of having a VPN is being able to access websites and content that might be restricted in your region. With private internet access, you have 84 countries to choose from and can protect an unlimited amount of devices at the same time with a single subscription. And don't worry, PIA has a no-lock policy, meaning your browsing data doesn't get stored. Sign up now using the link in the description to get an 83% discount for the next two years, which in total comes up to just $2 a month, not to mention the extra four months that you're getting completely for free. Let's kick things off with Cyberpunk, which runs really well using medium to high settings. The frame rate stays well above 60s 99% of the time, and let me tell you this, if a system is capable of running Cyberpunk, there is pretty much no game that it won't be able to run. Spider-Man Remastered runs pretty good using the highest preset. The frame rate never drops below 60s here either. You just might notice some light stuttering every once in a while, though once again we're using the highest preset here, and you can always improve performance by lowering a few settings. You like to bring me down. So not cool! Here's your stuff! Battlefield 2042 unfortunately doesn't allow us to enable the overlay anymore with the latest update, so all we have here is a tiny FPS counter at the top left corner, and after playing the game for a couple of hours, I can confirm that it is perfectly playable, with the frame rate staying well above 90s in most cases, using the medium preset.
Forza Horizon 5 runs extremely well using the medium preset and I highly doubt you're ever going to see drops below 140 frames per second. Next, we have Apex Legends, which basically never drops below 100 FPS using high settings, even in most intensive situations. Dying Light 2 runs great using the high preset. The frame rate stays above 80s most of the time. The me. People will always complain. The Ryzen 5 3600 has no issues running Warzone 2 either. Using the balanced preset, the frame rate rarely drops below 80s. For our final game we have Hogwarts Legacy, which is a terribly optimized game that runs pretty bad on anything lower than latest Ryzen 7s and Core i7s, so it should be no surprise that the game isn't going to run all that great on our Ryzen 5 3600 using the high preset, specifically in detailed areas like Hogwarts and Hogsmeade. Switching to the low preset, we can see that we're getting a massive boost in frame rate and basically a 100% reduction in stuttering, so I'd suggest not going beyond the medium preset for the best experience. When it comes to temps, our Ryzen 5 3600 doesn't exceed 69 degrees Celsius under full load in a 22 degree room using a tower cooler, and finally a build like this peaks at about 350 watts, so a 500 watt power supply will be plenty for a such build. One thing I'd like to point your attention to is the 100 watt idle power consumption, and the reason for that isn't the Ryzen 5 3600. The RX 6800 is to blame here. Setting the refresh rate to anything above 120 Hz in my case results in about a 50% increase in total system power consumption when idling. This is something we'll discuss in my upcoming videos about Radeon, it's an issue that's been around for way too long, but if you're going to pair this processor with an NVIDIA GPU or a lower-end Radeon graphics card such as the 6600 XT, you shouldn't exceed 70 watts at idle. Once again, for this price, the R5 3600 is a great bang for the buck chip. You can easily build yourself a PC using the CPU with just a couple of used parts under $400. And thanks to the great upgrade path of the AIM4 platform, you can always upgrade to a Ryzen 5 5600 or better to improve performance. As you might have noticed, the RX 6800 was clearly being held back by the 3600, so unless you play at 1440p, there is really no reason to go past the 6750XT slash 4060Ti with this CPU. Anyways, that's been it. Thank you so much for the support you've shown in 2023, and we've got a lot more content coming in 2024, so stay tuned for that. Either way, Happy New Year everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.